In this screencast, we're going to discuss what a dipole is and why we're interested in, in looking at dipoles. Um, the short answer is it's interesting to look at charges in configurations of pairs rather than just single point charges. So what we've been doing so far in this class is we've been discussing the electric field of a charge distribution that's just due to a sum of individual point charges or, or pieces of charge. So we'll, we'll take, what we've done is we've taken some distribution, some goofy distribution, and we said, look, this is made up of many infinitesimal pieces of charge, and if I want to find the electric field at some point P here, all I have to do is, is add up the field from these little bits of charge inside here, and if I add them all up one at a time by superposition, I can get the entire field that's over here. Um, that's what we've been doing so far. It turns out that it's more helpful in some cases, or more interesting, to actually count up pairs of charges instead of single charges. And that may seem odd. Why we're going to do this is we're going to look at uh, bodies of, uh, of, of matter, dielectrics like plastic and glass, that are electrically neutral. If we, if we added up all the charge, it would be zero. But if we added up the, and therefore we think the field outside and inside might be zero, but it turns out that if we add up um, the pairs of charges, how these pairs of charges are distributed, they actually cause an electric field just due to their distribution. There might be an electric field inside the dielectric, and there might be a new field outside just because of how this neutral body is actually distributed its charges. So the, the net charge is zero, but the net dipole moment is not zero. And therefore the net field due to the dipole is also not zero. Um, let's draw these and let's discuss this more. So the electric field for this uh, uh, configuration here, we draw dipoles like arrows. And what you can think of is that there's a minus charge at the base of this arrow and a plus charge at the tip. All right. So a pure dipole is different than what's drawn here on the right. This is a physical dipole that's separated by some distance. If we're going to draw the electric field uh, due to this, this, these two point charges equal and opposite, this is what we get. We'd find out that if we placed a, a, a test charge right around here, it's going to zoom over to the negative charge. If we placed one here, it's going to arc around. If we placed one here, it's going to arc around. One over here, it's going to arc around. You've made, uh, uh, you've plotted before in Physics 203, maybe, or maybe in high school, the electric field distribution of, of two point charges. And so let me draw it for you right now. Um, so. This is a, of a physical dipole. All right, and then symmetrically on the other side, I'm going to run out of room here. I'm drawing field lines. You, I could instead draw many, many arrows that would be curving in this path. Okay? So this, uh, this, this red marker here, this is the electric field due to these, uh, these two-point charges. All right, a physical dipole is where the distance between these charges, we can assume that the distance is, uh, is zero. I shrink this distance to zero, and so then my, my dipole looks something, it looks very similar. It's just going to emanate now from one point. So let me draw the field lines again, the electric field lines due to a, a dipole. All right, and then they come out symmetrically on the other side. And let's ignore them crossing. Electric field lines are not supposed to cross there. Okay. So let me label these. This would be, so this is the electric field due to a, this is a pure dipole over on the, the right side. And this is a physical dipole over here. But rather than drawing these fields, we're just gonna we're just gonna know that this is what we mean by these arrows. All right, for a better picture, you can look on Griffiths, page one fifty nine. So on page one fifty nine, figure three point three seven, he shows a a field of a pure dipole and and that of a physical dipole. All right, so why again are we interested in in these dipoles? We're going to instead now, in, in, if we have a charge distribution, instead of adding up the bits of charge to find the E field at point P, 
what we're going to do instead is we're going to add up all the little arrows, all the little dipoles in this distribution of charges. So we're going to count by pairs instead of one charge at a time. And what's goofy about this is, again, this, this whole configuration could be it could be neutral, it could have a total Q of zero, and then from what we've been talking about, we would think that the E field there is zero if the total Q here is zero. I could draw a Gaussian surface, uh, and I'd find out, look, the total Q enclosed is zero, but guess what, the total dipole is at zero. Let's define what this uh, vector quantity P, uh, the dipole, or, or dipole moment is what we should call it, is, and you can see it's the, if it's discrete, it's gonna be the sum of all the, the charges times the position uh, um, from the origin. All right, so the weird thing about the, about the dipole moment is it actually depends on your choice of origin. So in this situation here, on, on the right, we just have two charges. All right, and if we're going to, if we're going to add up these, these charges, what we'll get is that P is going to be equal to positive Q times R prime plus minus Q times R vector prime minus. Okay, and that's just going to be equal to Q of R plus minus R minus and we can define this quantity from the negative charge to the positive charge. Let's call that vector d. All right. Then this is just going to be equal to q d. All right. Why did we do that? Well, you can see that even though we're just adding up the the charge times the position vector to that charge from the uh, from the origin what we're getting our end result for, for every pair is from the minus charge to the plus charge. We're getting the vector from the minus charge to the plus charge and its magnet, magnitude is Q. All right, so we could actually do this for a continuous distribution. So the dipole moment of a, of a continuous distribution is going to be the sum R prime times the charge density rather than just charge over the entire volume of the distribution. So basically in, in this uh, in the case of the continuous distribution let's kind of draw what's going on here I have some blob of charge and for every every little volume piece what I'm doing is I'm going from the origin and that will be my R prime, all right? And what I'm doing is I'm basically, over all this distribution, I'm going to each volume piece, and I'm taking whatever uh, charge density that is, or, or whatever element of, of volume charge that is, and I'm multiplying by that R. And then I'm gonna add it to the next, the one next door times that new position factor. And over and over and over, what's that, what that basically is effectively doing, like it did over here, is it's gonna add up all these little arrows from wherever the minus charges are to the positive charges. Okay, so just going from the origin, multiplying by that little bit of charge, adding it to the next little bit of charge, to the next little bit of charge, is basically going to add up Q times all of these little Ds all over the place, wherever those might be. So this ladder method here, this is actually basically adding up all of these little arrows in the distribution. I can also think of it uh, another way. If somehow I know the dipole density, big P, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna put a little underscore here to make sure that you know that that's capital P. Griffiths uses a capital P; it shows up in the text. This capital P, this is basically the dipole density, analogous to how we had charge density. Dipole density. Okay, so the total dipole moment of the distribution is going to be the sum of the dipole density over the entire volume of the distribution. All right, so this is the case where we can think of this distribution being full of many little arrows 
each of these arrows representing a, a, a dipole density. So this would be the, the, the big P here would be the dipole moment per unit volume. And then the little P, it's kind of funny, the little P represents the total dipole moment of the entire distribution. Again, in the end, the question we want to answer is what is the field at a point P, which because we have a lot of P's going on here. This is a point P out here, not a dipole P. But what's the field at a point P due to all of these dipoles in the distribution? And because uh, the electric field is much harder to calculate directly um, due to a bunch of dipoles than the potential, we're going to motivate it from potential, and we can always take the gradient. So the potential for one dipole, V of R, is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi E naught R hat dot P, all right? This is, this is the total dipole moment for one dipole, all right? So this is the, this is the dipole moment of a single dipole. And check this out. This should surprise you if you don't know about dipoles. It's over, uh, it's over R squared. It's over an R script squared. All right, remember, potential for a single point charge it goes like 1 over R, but this one goes like 1 over R squared. That's a big difference. All right, this is, let's label that, that's a single dipole. All right, to get it then... For a distribution of dipoles, V of R, is going to be equal to 1 over 4 pi E naught. It's going to be the integral of R hat dot the dipole density now, that capital P, which could be a function of R, I should, which is a function of R, that's a vector over the R squared dependence summed up over the entire volume. Okay? This is for a distribution. That's a dist of dipoles. Okay? So if some way we can find out the dipole density, we can find out the potential. We can find out the uh, the E field, but it's not always that easy. We're not. We don't always have the luxury, and most of the time, we don't of knowing what the uh, what the what the dipole density is, the polarization. So it turns out that we'll have other indirect methods uh, to calculate the field due to these dipoles, but we're still going to think of of what these arrows are and what they do and how they make charges distribute. All right. In the next screencast, I'm going to show you where this comes from. All right, it's a fairly complicated multipole expansion, but this is part of Chapter 3 in Griffiths. It's uh, very mathematical, but it's something important that will come up in physics again and again.